open with a statement from Coach McDermott, who today is joined by Will Artino, Doug McDermott, and Gregory Eshenike. Coach, let's start. I have tremendous respect for Drake and the job that uh, that Coach Phelps does there, and you know they put so many shooters on the floor. And you know, watching last night, our challenge was to try to try to run those shooters off the three-point line the best we could. Um, and I and I thought for the most part we were able to do that. Um, I thought rebounding would really be critical when we beat them at our place. We out rebounded them by 15 when we lost at Drake. We did. We got out rebounded that night, um, and we had a you know we out rebounded them by 18 here this afternoon, which I thought was critical. But you know, great performances by a lot of people on our team, uh, in particular these three guys up here with me. Uh, Will Will was great the first half, um, and made some great plays the second half. Uh, Doug was consistent offensively throughout the game. And then I, I thought Gregory uh, really changed the game defensively uh, the second half. There was, there was nothing happening in the paint because of his energy uh, and ability to block some shots and change shots and go get the basketball off the board. So uh, really proud of our team and uh, looking forward to playing tomorrow. Let's get our hands up early so we can spot you and we'll keep the things moving along quickly. Questions for the student athletes? Hands on the left, second row. Gregory and Doug, could you just talk about uh, the lift you guys got from Will today? Yeah, yeah Will was tremendous there. Um, he's done what he's done uh, towards uh, the end of the season. Uh, he's, he's provided some really good minutes, and he's so easy to play with because uh, he can see over the defense, and he's really good at the high-low pass, and uh, he crashes the boards every time. So uh, it's, it's great to have uh, a guy like Will on the team. Yeah, I'm very Doug, and I think um, – one of the keys of winning a tournament like this is just having uh, people uh, on the, up the bench, you know, stepping up. And I think Will, you know, did a unbelievable job today. And uh, you know, in the first half, I think at least offensively, were not really going for me. And he came in and just completely like gave us, you know, a lot of energy, which was great. And uh, and I really hope that just not just him, but even you know, everybody else uh, on the bench can uh, bring it tomorrow as well. For the benefit of our transcription, folks, that was Doug first and Gregory second. We have a question in the center back, please. Doug, this is for you, Scott Rice, for KCCI in Des Moines. Becoming the school's all-time leading scorer, how does that feel, and what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's really cool. Uh, I mean, got to give a lot of credit to my teammates and uh, coaches because, I mean, I wouldn't ever be in this position without them and uh, just play with a lot of unselfish guys. And, uh, I mean, it's been a blast so far, but can't dwell on it too much because we've got a big game tomorrow and uh, got a big uh, rest of the season. So, I mean, it's, it's really cool, though, and uh, a great honor. Again, a question in the back by the cameras. No? Okay. Other questions for the student-athletes? Front row, second row on the left. Uh, yeah, Gregory, your second half, could you just kind of talk about uh, did something wake you up at halftime or what? caused you to come out and play so well in the second half? No, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, I just, it's just part of the game. You just got to stay playing hard. And, uh, you know, um, I thought I rebounded well the first half. Like I said, offensively, I guess I wasn't really, I didn't make a much of a difference uh, individually. But, um, you know, I was just trying to set screens for my, for my uh, teammates. And nothing, I just stayed with it. And, you know, the second half, uh, I mean, Doug talked to me as well. And uh, he got Obviously, 
second half to change the game because we have confidence that even if we do get the off the dribble, he's going to be there uh, to block the shot. So uh, it's huge having a guy like that. And Gregory, uh, just on a, I think it was a huge part of the, the plan that our, co- our coaches put together and the focus that we had last night. I mean, we don't have time to prepare. Obviously, we don't know we're going to play it. So I thought our team, except for the coaches, staff, and the players did a good job just uh, monitoring tomorrow. I mean, last night, at least this morning. And uh, we follow the plan, and, you know, they're like, like uh, you know, far they do, and, and that's what happens when they do that. I'm the last guy in this time. Two of you have been waiting for you to talk about what it means, not only today, but uh, what you've been able to provide these last, this last month. Yeah, I mean, just whenever a coach calls your name off the bench, it's something that you know, provides spark. You've got to pick up where you're the starter guys left off, and that's what I've really been trying to do. Stay more focused, more into the game. And then when I coach calls my number, I just try to get ready for it. Uh, Coach, what do you think the biggest thing that you've learned from the season is just the focus and the effort that you've put into it? Yeah, I mean, it's just being more focused, more in tune to the game, and then whenever coach calls one more question for the student athletes. In the back. By the camera. The first step that you see at Omaha, guys, just expectations to get 24 hours to turn around and, and play again. What do you expect out of the second match up here? Gregory, why don't we start your end and work back this way? No, I just, I mean, my only expectation is that, uh, once again, but I got as many before I hope we can stay as focused as we are. And once again, do the same thing again tonight. Just watch the film, come up with a plan, and uh, just be ready to uh, execute it tomorrow. I mean, it's not, uh, not, it doesn't really matter who we play. Like I said, our coach will put a plan together, and I expect uh, our team to be locked in and ready to do it again tomorrow. Doug? Yeah, we'll be ready for either Indiana State or Evansville. So uh, they're both really good teams, well coached, and uh, really grind you out and defend. Um, so we just got to be smart, get off our feet. Just follow our coach's plans and uh, be ready to go tomorrow. Will? Yeah, it's basically the same turnaround that we had from last night to today's game. Just we have played today. And like Doug said, they're both great teams. So just prepare. And then hopefully. Gentlemen, thank you for your time and attention. Your applications here are completed. Questions for Coach McDermott? Hands, please. On the right, in the middle. Coach, you had uh, something like a 15-to-1 run in a nine-minute stretch where they didn't make a field goal. What, what were you doing defensively in that time? <laughs> well, we, were, we executed what we tried to do the whole game, and that's you know, really try to get them off the three-point line. Uh, and as, as Doug alluded to, you know, maybe we get beat off the dribble once in a while by doing that, but we've got Gregory back there to clean that up if that happens. And um, I, I thought Jaw Hans Manigat and uh, Avery Dingman did a great job on Ben Simons. Uh, he, he had to work for all nine of his shots, and a couple of his makes were really tough looks at the basket. Um, you know, he's, he's hard to guard because he's, he's, in, he's always in motion, and he reads screens so well. So... Uh, we thought it was critical that, that we don't let him get started. He didn't have a great game last night, and, and I was fearful that he wouldn't have two poor shooting nights in a row. Uh, but fortunately, uh, our guys were up to the challenge defensively. Again on the right. Coach, uh, does this team ever cease to amaze you? They're, they're a special group, there's no question. Uh, you know, we've had different guys step up throughout the year. Um, you, know, and, you know, like Ethan Rogge played seven minutes this afternoon. Uh, he's sixth man of the year and would start on most every team in the league. But because of some of the matchups today uh, and the way Will and Gregory were playing and Doug were playing, it, did, it didn't make as much sense. And Ethan is celebrating like everybody else. Uh, he, he understands and trusts us, and he knows that we trust him. Um, and that's what makes this team special. Uh, the next guy's got to be ready. Will's a shining example of not losing faith and continuing to work hard. Uh, and believing in what your coaches say, that you, you have to be ready when your number's called, and your number will be called eventually. And, you know, fortunately for us uh, today, Will was outstanding. Again from the camera, Will in the back. Coach, obviously a big historic day for Doug. Just your thoughts on what he's been able to do throughout his career. Yeah, you know, it hasn't probably hit me yet. Uh, obviously it's an unbelievable accomplishment to do it in, in three years. Uh, and especially for me, uh, being as familiar as I am with the, the history of Creighton, uh, having arriving at Wayne State in 94 and seeing really everything that's happened since then and, and learning about the uh, Bob Harsteads and Bob Portmans of the world since my arrival, uh, just how special their careers were and to think that 
Doug has scored more points than them in, in three years is really incredible. And a credit to him and certainly a credit to the guys that he's played with uh, the last three years. Um, but it's, it's something that I think uh, it's special. Uh, it's more special because it's happening on a team that's winning a lot of basketball games. And I think that's what's, what's most gratifying, I think, to Doug. And, and I certainly feel the same way. Question in the middle in the back. Uh, Marty Terrell, Yahoo Sports Radio. Greg, can you talk about uh, Will Artino and specifically what's gone into this transformation uh, and his development as a player? Anybody specifically, big man camp? What has gone into this uh, transformation of Will? It's coaching, Marty. Come on, you should know that. Uh, you know, Will came to us at 185 pounds, and you saw him in high school. And uh, he before the season, he was up to 230. Uh, he's lost a little since then, but, you know, that's – that's 40 some pounds that Will's gained uh, over really a pretty short period of time. And he's continued to work, he's continued to believe. Uh, his teammates have embraced what he brings to the table. And, and I'll give him a lot of credit because there were, there were two or three conference games he didn't play. Coach's decision did not play. And it's hard to stay focused and stay motivated when you're, when you're in that situation where you don't know what to expect. And uh, he's just played so well when we put him in there that we've had to try to find minutes for him. And uh, he's as productive player, uh, productive of a player as we have on our team per minute play. Um, but a lot of the work, uh, Will deserves the credit. Certainly our strength coach, Dan Bailey, and his staff has done it, have done a great job with him. Uh, but Will's a much more confident person than the one that came to us three years ago. He's grown up in a lot of ways. And it's, it's, been, very, uh, it's been a lot of fun to see. And it's pretty exciting to think what he could become here the next two years. Question on the left, second row. Mac Gregory showed a little extra fire in that second half. Can you talk about what you guys get when he plays with that kind of intensity? We are a totally different team on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, we don't resemble the team that we are when he isn't playing like that. Uh, he, he is so active. Uh, and he just, he made multiple plays on several possessions. And uh, I watched the Wichita game with Gregory all of his minutes, and, and that game was the same. I mean, he would help on a ball screen. He would help on a dribble drive. He would, you know, change a shot. He'd block out. He'd go get the rebound. And it was, it was possession after possession. Um, so I'm really proud of him because sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to get that, that, that switch flipped and when it gets flipped, he's, he's hard to deal with. And uh, as he said, Doug found him a couple times early in the second half, and he was able to get a couple baskets, and I think that really lit his fire. And uh, he, he, was, he was outstanding on the defensive end and on the glass this afternoon. One last question for Coach McDermott this afternoon. Anyone? Hand? Last chance. Thanks, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.